Howdy folks, it's Ajo the Hunting Gear Guy. And this is a HEMA HG-105, or at least it will be once I take it out of the case. <laughs> it's a, a semi-automatic bullpup 12-gauge shotgun from Turkey, and it looks like this. So it's very compact, uh, it's uh, magazine-fed right in the rear here, and uh, it's got a charging handle that, uh, that is right up front there. So uh, super interesting shotgun. Uh, I can see that we're locked open empty here, magazine's empty, so why don't we take a closer look at this thing. So starting from the rear, we have a, a rubber butt pad on here. It's pretty stiff. Uh, there's not really a lot of uh, cushioning to this thing, um, but it's rubber, so at least it's <laughs> at least it's not like a metal or plastic butt plate on there. Uh, we have a sling swivel on the bottom here. Uh, we have an adjustable cheek piece. Uh, let's just loosen that a little bit. Hopefully that was loosening. Oh, it was. And so we can adjust this cheek piece. If you're going to run a scope on this thing and shoot turkeys or something, or maybe a red dot, uh, this will allow you to get your cheek at the right spot, and then you can just tighten it down to uh, whatever spot you want to. Uh, we have, just on the one side here, there's our ejection port, so uh, lefties need not apply. I wouldn't want to put my face there. <laughs> Uh, closer up to the front here, we've got uh, some pop-up sights, so just back up iron sights that uh, that come with the shotgun, so they just pop up just like that. Uh, the rear sight has your option of really wide open, or you can pop up this other one here and get a tighter uh, peep through there. Uh, the front is a post uh, that is adjustable. Just towards the bottom here, we have an angled foregrip. Uh, that's one option that you can use here, and that's really to uh, to keep your hand in the right spot. One issue with uh, with bullpup guns is you don't want to like put your hand in front of the muzzle. So having a, a very comfortable, steady place to put your hand is a good idea. It's also got to stop there. So if you need to hit it against a barricade for a competition shooting or something like that, uh, it would work for that as well. Now, one thing you can move between the two sides is the charging handle. I have it on the left hand side here, but you can move it onto the right hand side if you prefer the AK style. I'm just thinking that if I need to load or fix a jam or something like that, I'm going to be using my left hand to actuate the gun, and I would prefer the charging handle on the left-hand side. Now, the magazines will lock the bolt uh, open on the last round. Last round gets this little tail uh, popping up here, so if you have any rounds in there, that tail gets pushed down into the magazine. If you don't have any rounds in, the tail will, fo uh, will pop up. So if I rack it back you can see that it locks open. So I'm gonna drop the magazine. I'm going to pull the bolt back, nicely let it forward by pressing the bolt release. Uh, I am going to unscrew this cap. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> I had it on there pretty tight. Now, once that cap is off, this whole front end here is just gonna pop right off. So. That part there is, uh, it's aluminum, so I trust that uh, that it'll more or less hold zero, but you might want to check between uh, 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 really deep cleans kind of a thing. So we can see our detent on the front there that was acting against this cap to, uh, to help hold it in. Uh, and our charging handle is a non-reciprocating spring-loaded unit that uh, that stays with the upper. All right, time for some more mind-blowing stuff. The, uh, the two nuts here are... Uh, one of them's left hand, one of them's right hand. I can't remember which one's which, so uh, let's find out together. Oh, top one is right hand loose. Righty loosey? Oh, that's weird. And then the bottom one. Yeah, the bottom one's lefty loosey. There we go. And you can actually see that they have two different thread sizes. And if you just need to uh, to remember, the one that kind of looks like a barrel goes on the bottom. And then one that looks like this goes on the top. And it's got writing on the top there as well. Now that we're at this stage, uh, we can take our disassembly lever, which is right there, and we can flip that down. I think I need to pull the bolt back just a little bit to do this. So I'm just going to grab up here, flip that switch. Now the bolt will uh, be allowed to go forward. And really the best way of taking this apart is to take the barrel and the bolt and the whole shebang out. If you try to do it separately, <laughs> it's not going to work the best. Uh, so I'm just going to pull it loose there and just slowly pull those all out together. Now that there's not much holding that bolt in there, so it might fall out on you. I'm just gonna put this to the side. Now you can see that bolt locked into the barrel, uh, all riding on this carrier here, so I can take this off. And there's our bolt. Here's our uh, guide. Yeah, I think that's a guide, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Uh, there's our bolt and carrier, and you can see that it just rides on there. 
Our bolt is just one of these standard. There's a firing pin on the back here. There's the lug that uh, goes into that barrel recess uh, to uh, to hold the barrel in. So there's the barrel recess there. Uh, and here is our gas piston on the front. This might be a little bit hard to get out just because they're kind of friction being held in there. There we go. And uh, this part is one that you might have to clean. You might have to clean inside there and this gas port because on a semi-automatic gas-powered shotgun, this is going to be where that carbon collects and that these two parts need to be clean-ish. So uh, if you fire a few hundred rounds to a thousand, couple thousand rounds, and you start to get some jams because it's short-stroking, I would look to clean this and this part specifically. All right, to reassemble, we're going to take our bolt, we're going to stick it on that carrier so that uh, when we go operate it back and forth, it's operating that lug. Uh, we'll take our righty thingy me bobber up the front there <laughs> that acts against the gas piston and we'll put that on the front it's just going to hang on there so it's not really going to do too much and then we're going to align the whole thing into our barrel and again the advantage here is that this is a lot easier to do as a unit and put it back on the gun than it is to uh, 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 do it onesie twosie now just on the lower here, uh, you may want to clean this off if it gets kind of gunky, but this is mostly just like tertiary damage when it comes to, to cleaning. You might need to clean the port out there a little bit, um, but you shouldn't actually have to do that much cleaning on the lower here. All right, now to take this and put it all back together, I'm going to slip that rod in there. And then... Just had to get that bolt better in there. And now my barrel is able to get into that receiver and now it should just kind of go all in there. Uh, once it's in all the way, I can, sorry, I'll just rotate that so you can see, I can pull that bolt back a little bit and then rotate my disassembly lever. Now it's not gonna come out. Next up, I take my barely kind of nut. That one goes righty tighty. Throw on the other guy on top. That one goes lefty tighty and take my upper and carefully put it on there. I'm just looking to not ding things up as I'm slowly putting it back in place. And then turn this guy back onto the top. Lastly, and this is something you should do with all your guns whenever you take them apart and put it back together again, do a quick function check. So uh, try the charging handle, see if the safety works, and see if when the safety is off, it fires. And it does that just fine here. Last thing, thing I wanted to check is with an empty mag, check if it still locks open, and it does. So what else comes in the box? Well, it comes with two of these magazines. These are five rounders. Uh, it also comes with a full choke kit, uh, which is actually something kind of nice. I, I kind of like that the, the Turkish guns always come with uh, more than a couple of chokes. So we've got three chokes. Uh, we've got one of these nicer round choke tools here. Some of the, the flat stamp steel ones, I don't really like. They don't really balance really well in the barrel, right? Uh, whereas these guys, you can put that in there uh, as long as you get it on properly. And it gives you like a nice solid feel because it doesn't wobble as bad as those stamp steel ones. And of course it comes with the case that it comes in. Uh, the case is fairly well padded and uh, it's a good fit for the shotgun. Uh, and it's overall, a pretty nice feeling case. Like, yeah, it's got just like this nylon on the outside, but uh, feels pretty good. So if you end up buying one of these things, you might be wondering what is going on with the bottom of these magazines? Why do they have a button on the side here? And why do they have a groove there? Well, that is, will actually fit onto the Picatinny rail on the bottom here where this AFG is. So instead of having that angled foregrip, you could have the other magazine here. I wouldn't really recommend it, but some guys out there want to carry two mags on their gun, and I, I guess that's one way of doing it. Uh, it'll hold them really nicely in the case, so that's always an option. I prefer the uh, the foregrip here just because it uh, it feels better to hang on to. So how's the gun to shoot? Um, well, I mean, the, the nice thing about bullpup uh, firearms in general, they're very compact. So if you put this on a sling and you throw it on your back, it really stays out of the way. The barrel's not going to catch on branches or anything like that. Uh, and if you're heading out the door in the morning and you've got it slung over your back, you're not going to hit like a, a door stop or anything. Door stop? Door frame. You're not going to hit the door frame on the way out of the house. So that's nice. Um, I did find that I had to run a whole bunch of uh, 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 high power stuff through it to get it to run reliably. So right out the, the gate, it wouldn't run target ammunition. Uh, so I had to run some three inch like duck 
rounds through it to uh, uh, to kind of break it in uh, a little bit. Uh, and after that, uh, my target rounds uh, ran fine. And it, I typically run like uh, ounce and an eighth. I didn't test it with seven eighths or like uh, uh, light target rounds. I I can't imagine it would run with those. Maybe it would. Maybe it would though. Uh, I just I I always run uh, ounce and an eighth. So who do I recommend this shotgun for? Well, uh, with five round magazines and no two round, you can't use it for water fouling. Um, not that it, it's a really an ideal shotgun for water foul. Uh, because of the sling ability, it is kind of handy for like just going out in the woods and shooting stuff. <laughs> it's, it's really easy to just throw on your back and, and kind of head out. Uh, so it does have that going for it. Um, and it's a, it's just a, a generally a fun or cool gun to uh, to use. So um, I think that's the primary person that would be looking to buy one of these. Is someone looking for a cool, fun shotgun to use at the range? Um, not someone looking for like the most ultimate uh, hunting shotgun, for example. So um, if you're looking for a cool bullpup shotgun uh, just to like toy around with at the range or uh, head out into the bush and, and shoot some stuff, take a look at the HEMA HG105. Thanks for watching.